This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, everybody. Hope you're well. This is my first episode that I'm posting to Rumble before we post it to YouTube, so I'm going to give it a week or two. And so if you find this from the 28th of August 2023 until about the 10th of September... Well done. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. Now, the interview subject, the person at the center of this chat is Michael Starney from Dark Tranquility, The Halo Effect, and also Grand Cadaver. Now, the catalyst for the chat with Michael is due to The Halo Effect headlining Lagerfest, which is a festival, if you haven't guessed it. (laughs) It's going to be touring Australia, select cities throughout November so I'll certainly be at that now in this chat here of course we talk a little bit about the festival but it's just great to get the lowdown from a Gothenburg original that is exactly what Michael is so we talk about his early the relationship in the early days with the members of In Flames Hammerfall how he got Dark Tranquility well we talk about Dark Tranquility's recent wouldn't call them travails but they've had some band member changes so we discuss that and I pose a question does Michael feel as though the Gothenburg scene of the early 1990s is it as important to the evolution of extreme metal as the Floridian scene? Because I certainly think it is, but I ask Michael, so stick around and hear how he answers. Now, if you've tuned in via the podcast apps, you're going to hear a tune. And also, you people on Rumble, actually, the YouTube edition won't get this, but Rumble and the podcast apps, you will hear a Grant Cadaver song. A Crawling Feast of Decay, my favourite track of the year released thus far, or one of them at the very least anyway. Grant Cadaver, killer band. Goes right back to the, the very roots of what the Gothenburg scene was all about. That's the philosophy behind the outfit. So yeah, listen to this track here, and once it's done, we'll dive into the chat. You people on YouTube, you know the drill. I can't play music, so you'll hear the chat right now. Either way, let's go. Hey, man. Michael, how's things, mate? Hey, how are you? Great, great. Nice to uh, hear early. <laughs> it was a surprise. I, I saw the email. Um, wow, I'd better get on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've been doing a few today already, so yeah. No, that's great. No, thank you for doing that. Yeah. How have the On that note, how have the calls been going? Oh, great. It's, it's fun. You enjoy doing this sort of thing? I do. I mean, you get to talk about the, the things that you love. Um, it's not bad. Sometimes uh, when you're doing like 17 in a day or something like that, maybe oh it's, it's not yeah. as fun, but but that's that's rare. Very rare. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. What what do you, you've been doing this a long time and, uh, you know, I've been a fan of your work for a long time too, I've got to say, but uh, you, you've seen the transition Ooh. from print to internet to now it being more of a video-based sort of a thing by video casting and YouTube and the like. Do you think that the standard of heavy metal journalism, in inverted commas, do you think it's improved or it's about the same? Ooh. Um, I mean, it, it's definitely different, right? I mean, mm. um, I kind of mourn the loss of, of some of my favourite magazines. Um, mm. Here in Sweden, we had two, Sweden Rock Magazine and Close Up Magazine. They were fucking fantastic and they have... have shaped you know how i what i listen to you know my favorite bands some of the my favorite bands i discovered through reading uh metal magazines you know and i grew up with metal forces from america terrorizer um that kind of stuff and and i found pen pals you know through through magazines um and tape trading friends so it has a very special place in my heart you know um but of course, this is faster, easier, more uh, easily digestible, you know, and uh, um, and it's way faster. You can get things out in a day, you know, and information that can travel anywhere. Anyone can access this. So, of course, it's great. But, uh, but of course, like with the attention span of, uh, of, you know, people today, it's different too, you know. Um, I, I like the fact that some of my 
the magazines that I write actually do long form interviews or articles, you know, where you can really dig deep into like a career of a band or, you know, or certain releases or a, an era or whatever, or producers, something like that. You know, these, these things that, that take time and someone really puts, you know, ton of effort into these articles. And I love that. And that's, that's one of the things that I miss, like, you know, this more long form stuff because apparently people don't like to read as much as they used to, you know? And uh, so, so that, that's kind of sad, but at the same time, like there's a lot of cool blogs that I, that I frequent that I follow uh, where I find a lot of new music. And, and of course, if there are, you know, interviews and things that I need to know about a new band that I don't know, uh, I will look it up and I can find all that information easily and super fast. So of course I, I appreciate that, but there's something to, you know, the, the old ways of doing things that I, that I think yeah. I prefer. Yeah. I think I'm with you on that point there. Oh, look, I, I have a wonderful opportunity to hear you with the podcast, the videos and the like to connect with fans and fellow yeah. appreciators of extreme metal and the like, but I grew up in the same era you did, you know, with metal maniacs. I interviewed Mike Greenblatt, yeah. who was the editor and oh, terrorizer yeah. magazine as well. Like you mentioned there, and we didn't have a lot of fanzines down here, you know, when you sl slay a mag, but it was really yeah. hard to get a hold of copies that were like less than 12 months old back in those yeah. days because of the non yeah. tyranny of distance. But the, the, probably the only significant downside I'd say in and amongst everything else is this clickbait issue that we've got at the yeah. moment with uh, Blabbermouth oh. and all these other sites that and it's not just Blabbermouth, right? They're probably the tamest version of it, really. There's True. these typing your name or Dark Tranquility or what have you into YouTube. Now, I haven't done it, but I'm willing to bet that someone's repurposed and appropriated all of this content, just put together some bullshit thing to try to make yeah. it really controversial and like feeds and clicks. We know that. And if I could yeah. do away with that, if I had a wand where I could do away with all of that and then encourage people into long form reading books again, biographies yeah. on these great musicians like you, mate, that's the wand I'd wave. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, I mean, and I think, well, podcast has done a great job of kind of replacing the the long form interviews. Mm. And I, I really love that. There are some, some amazing ones that I, that I love where it's, you know, like, yeah, take your time. Like it's, if, if it's two hours, no worries, you know, like I love that stuff. And I, I, I've learned so much about artists and, you know, and TV and movies and all that stuff that I listen to. But I think that that, that is a great way of, of uh, getting close to, to kind of uh, an artist and really like, yeah, just listen to them talk for, for an hour or two. So um, there's a great one here in, in Sweden, like uh, they, they do, Sometimes they do a whole series just on, on different artists and bands, um, just totally deep dive into sometimes the entire discography or sometimes, you know, uh, musicians talk about other bands and stuff. It, it's amazing. So that is, is a good way. And I, you know, and for me, uh, I'm always leaving or traveling or something like that, like listening yeah. to podcasts rather than carrying, or, you know, carrying with me books or magazines. It's, it's a pretty damn sweet alternative, I think, to that. Yeah, I'm with you. It's, it's these days. It's YouTube, Spotify, and Kindle. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, I mean they're all on your phone, and I'm I'm like everybody else. So I've got to be honest. Yeah. A conversation for another time, but by the way, but yeah, yeah I'm I'm a bit worried about the free speech component of everything. So I'm looking at some options with Odyssey, maybe, but there just isn't yeah. isn't the audience there at the moment, as you know. So you can put it no. there, and it gets 20 views compared to the thousands that you might get on YouTube, and yeah, people yeah, yeah. are here. There's no doubt. But when we, I had a mate or a bloke online, actually, I should say, tell me uh, in response to whether or not I should do that or not, telling me that he's using Google Drive, so YouTube, Google, same company, and um, yeah. telling me that he got a warning sent to him via email for a video that was okay. in his Google Drive, so not publicly available, talking about, what? you know, alternative theories about what happened with coronavirus and i think we're in very very dangerous territory when that sort of Ooh, stuff yeah happens. that is that is scary yeah Fuck. i i spoke to john joseph from chromags and we spoke about the coronavirus <laughs> and what was going on there and i got a you know the strike you know you get three strikes and i think and you're off and i got i got a strike yeah. because of that and i, wow. I just yeah and I look i'm a I've said it a few times on the podcast, mate. You know, I'm a regular citizen, a taxpayer, a mortgage holder, and my kids are at school. And I think we've collectively got to say, no, that's enough. Okay. If you, yeah. you know, the best solution to bad speech is airing it in the sunlight and letting people digest and say that's wrong, you know. Yeah. And 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 if it's if it's if it's just 
a lot of these so-called conspiracy theories about coronavirus anyway have turned out to be the bloody truth, especially about yeah, yeah, Anthony yeah. Fauci, you know. So it's yeah. it's just nuts that we're at a point where someone gets sent an email about something that's in their private drive having contravening yeah. the terms and, and conditions of service of that product. Yeah. And, and I, I am, I've got to be honest, mate, I am worried about that. So you you might be one of my first episodes that I – I put on uh, Odyssey or, or Rumble as a first dig, and then maybe later put okay. it on YouTube if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So there we go. But uh, yeah, brings us up to the point that we actually have that we are having this conversation, which is uh, due to Lagerfest. John texted me yes. a couple of couple of weeks ago about it, and um, yeah, he said uh, I think he said something like we'll catch up in Brisbane, you know, because he's from down south and. So yeah. we'll catch up in Brisbane because I'm really both looking forward to watching you guys. And I said, what, yeah. what do you mean? The Halo Effect are touring? He said, yes, they're playing on Lagerfest. So <laughs> is this is this your – I don't think this is your first time in Australia, so correct me if I'm wrong if it is or it isn't, but are you, you guys must be looking forward to this knowing you've got quite a fan base down here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the first time for this band, uh, of course. Um, with Dr. Hulity, I've, I've been – we toured three times, times, I think, in Australia, but it's been – seven or eight years since the last time so it's it's about time that we uh, that i come back and uh the other guys have been to australia a few times within flames of course but uh this is the first time we had doing this so it's going to be awesome like i i cannot wait um it's going to be a nice change from you know the coming winter here in uh up north um so uh i i i, I cannot wait to come up yeah there's a lot of friends that i have been dying to see and um a lot of beers that I need to drink, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Big question for you. A lot of Jasper fans out there. Will he be coming down as well? I don't think so. No. Um, for Jasper, it's like traveling is 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 a big issue for him, and um, so he he won't be. I don't think so. I would love to, and it would be awesome. And let's see. And I know he wants to, um, but he also knows that uh, you know if you have. Um, like addiction problems, like he has, like being on a, um, you know, twenty-five hour flight and stuff like that is just not the best um, environment for him. Um, but we'll see. But and I really hope so. It would be fantastic. Yeah, I only spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. Actually, it was great to see him again. Oh. And he, look, he's he's yeah. looking good, you know, and he seems. Oh he, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he seems to understand what's going on. To your point, so I was it was going to Definitely. be a minor miracle, I think, if he was going to come down here. But I thought, God, if it was one tour, because he's only been down here a couple of times, I think, in the very yeah. early two uh, thousands or what have you. Yeah. You know, so um, is he still a part of your songwriting process, though? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's that's what I love. Like he he brings so much to it, and uh, uh, and it's it's amazing to see like going to the studio when we started kind of recording for the for the next album um jesper's instinct is so kind of finely tuned and so kind of instinctual that you know we can sit to work on something that like, we'd, we've been working on it for hours and hours and then jesper goes in and goes, let me take a stab at this and it solved you know and he just has this way of uh finding just the perfect kind of melody or the perfect rhythm or perfect riff to kind of like solve any issues we might have with a song and it's it's amazing to see and uh so he really he contributed a lot to this to the new songs that we we've been writing oh, and um yeah yeah well, that's great to see yeah great yeah so so days of the lost it's um look it's a very solid album um, and cool, I feel you. as though it's it's interesting for you guys because it was a temptation early on to label it as a super group because it is in a way. But because of the album's strength, we don't have to use words like that because it's the album and therefore the band. You stand on your own two feet. So do you, do you feel as though this band has the legs in in some ways to become the main thing? I could totally appreciate that there's there's dark tranquility and a killer band and you know, one of one of the formative bands in the genre too, I must add too. Congratulations yeah. on that. But the Halo effect, the future is very bright, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, it, and that's the hardest part. Like I have to uh do both like all the time. Uh so it's 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 full on, you know. Dr. Hulita, of course, is always my priority and it's always gonna take precedent. like it's gonna, you know, I'll I'll drop anything if if Dr. Dr. Hulita comes first, right? But we're going to manage to to do this as well, and um, and it's a bit of a challenge. But so far, it's been it's been okay. You know, some weekends are insane where I have to do 
three shows uh, with two different bands, um, that kind of stuff. Mm. And also like coming home from a tour with one band and just, you know, home for a week and then go out on another tour with another band, that kind of stuff. So Mm. yeah, but it's all my fault, you know, (laughs) and so far I think I can handle it, but, um, but it it is cool. Like we, we didn't set out to do anything other than just write music together and and have a great time. Um, we've known each other since we were teenagers. So kind of doing this now with all the experience that we've had have between us, uh, makes this just like a joyous thing where we could, yeah, focus on making music that we love and, and having a ball doing it. And, um, it's been, and we decided early on that if it's not fun, if we don't feel it, if we don't kind of feel this kind of like creative thing and have fun while, um, you know, touring and. Uh, then we won't do it, you know. Um, but we're in a stage now where we're kind of dying to put out a new album and, and do this all over again, you know. Um, and it's only been a year since the first album, but we're already kind of already ready, kind of like, oh, hey, let's 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 move on, let's do more. And um, yeah, it it means I'm, I'm constantly busy and I'm never <laughs> never have any time off, but um, it's worth it, I think. You've got another good problem, which is that the Grand Cadaver. Okay, I, I've yeah. got I got sent deities of death like sleep last week, and oh nice! Cool. I've got without pissing in your pocket. I think it's the track of the year so far. Nice. I, I heard it and went, Thank you, "Holy shit!" I'm an old old yeah. sweet death and Gothenburg sound fan. So for somebody yeah. like me, you know that sound is right in the sweet spot that you've got there, bringing it right back to the very origins of you know you guys. You know, you're 19 years of age and you're three beers into your rehearsal sort of sound. You know. Yeah. That's, that's that's the way I felt about that. So yeah, t- can you t- talk about what's going on there? Yeah, and I mean, I mean, that's exactly what we set out to do. Um, like Alex, who writes most of the material or everything, uh, basically, he he's a neighbor of mine. He lives three houses away, and we started hanging out and going to the same shows a couple of years back, and uh, we came became friends. And um, during the pandemic, he asked me like, "Hey, you know," when he's constantly writing, he's doing all kinds of projects, and he was like. I have this idea about a you know old school death metal band you know and he he grew up in stockholm and one of his teachers used to be like the old guitar player from tiamat so when he was like 14 or something like that his teacher said like oh you guys are into metal right and he like they he gave <laughs> alex a couple of records and it was tiamat and dismember or something like that <laughs> and off he went and that, that became like his entire world and then, uh, and then he moved to Gothenburg and sort of hanging out. And then he said, like, let's do it. And then we have Stefan, who used to be in Tiamat back in the day, and and Daniel who plays used to play with Catatonia. So it's just like this made sense. And we said, like, let's have fun. Let's write something super fast. And that's what Alex is, uh, does. He writes songs in a minute. It's insane. And then um, I'm I'm given like a week to write all the lyrics, and then we record in six days or something like that. So mm-hmm. coming from like the Halo effect that takes six to eight months to record an album and DT, it takes a year or more to six days of just like recording it. And it means like it really is going back to to the roots of, of what you truly loved about this genre. You know, like this is what I grew up with. I went to see Nihilist, you know, when they played here um, mm-hmm. in, was it 88 or something like that? Um, so this is this is so close to our hearts and uh it's it's so much fun to just write basically insane lyrics about nothing um and and have a blast you know and uh, so we we don't get to see each other that often because everybody lives in different places it's only me and alex and christian who are here but um we're going to do some shows we have some shows in november coming up in october and um so we we're, yeah and uh, yeah the album comes out on uh, friday and okay. yeah, two days from now and um and and it's it's amazing like it's so much passion that goes into this project that it's it's insane so but it it doesn't take up that much time but it takes a lot of i don't know like a lot of planning and a lot of kind of uh energy but in a good way you know mm. Yeah, I can, I can hear it. Don't worry, it comes right across, yeah. And look, here's yeah. a point I wanted to raise. So I love talking to you guys who were in the scene back in the day and you've been doing it for decades, you know, and yeah. I've long felt that the Swedish scene, so the Gothenburg scene of the of the early 90s in particular, it's as important to the evolution of extreme metal as the Floridian scene was, okay? Is that a, is that a comment you agree with? 
I don't know. It's hard to, to for me to say, I think, but um, because I know how important the Florida scene was to me, mm. you know, growing up with Nocturnus and uh, an executioner and uh, atheist D side, that kind of stuff. I mean, that was everything to me. Um, so, but it's, you know, of course I, we, we see it and we hear it from a lot of people that, you know, who, they kind of maybe grew up a little bit later than than I and started listening to to music from 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 Gothenburg or from you know Sweden in general um and that became everything so um so I I, I get it you know I, I don't know in terms of how important certain things are but I'm I'm really really proud of what we have accomplished here in, in Sweden and in, in Gothenburg in particular um where um, I think there's so many great bands and so many original bands and certainly if there is a sound it's it's the sound of good quality and uh and good musicianship and integrity and uh and passion and uh and it i always felt that like we have some of the best bands in in many many different genres and mm -hmm. to me that's fantastic like we have fantastic you know prog rock we have amazing doom metal bands we have a lot of psychedelic cool um bands and insane black metal and fantastic death metal of course and uh so it's it's all there and um the variety is insane and which means i get to go to shows every week you know seeing new bands um mm. and i i love that so it, it's it's really cool and it and of course it's it's amazing that we kind of left um a mark somehow mm. Is Gothenburg, I'm none the wiser, by the way, and it's the first time I've asked him this question, interestingly enough, but is Gothenburg similar to Melbourne that it's a bit of an arty sort of a town, is it, city? Ooh, I don't know enough about Melbourne to make that uh, comparison, I think, but but it it, it is. Um, I mean, it's the second biggest city. It, it's not as, you know, intense as, you know, like a capital is, like uh, like Stockholm is. Um, and it's, it's very much encouraged um to to be a musician or an artist um there are a lot of venues there's you can get you know a lot of help when you're an upstarting band you can uh you know opportunities to, to find a, a rehearsal room rent equipment that kind of stuff so yeah i, I would say so like when in the, in the early 90s there was like this um music contest in town that went every weekend where all bands kind of played and, you know, did three songs each. And it was the biggest thing. Everybody went, there were thousands of people every night and all the kind of young bands could actually perform on a proper stage in front of a proper crowd. And that really sparked, um, the imagination, like when, when we were kids, like, Oh, holy shit, we want to be part of that. And then we were eventually, and, and that kind of inspired us to go bigger and to, to kind of continue. So stuff like that has always been going on. So I think, uh, yeah, there's everybody's a musician here. It's insane. Everybody I know. <laughs> yeah, S Sydney and Stockholm. I haven't been to Stockholm, by the way, but I imagine that the vibe yeah. would be similar. Just chaotic yeah. um, global cities with tons of different people yeah. from all, all walks of life from all across the globe. Exactly. And Melbourne's yeah. a bit like that too, but it still feels like, and they don't like me saying this, but it still feels like it's got that country town Australian yeah. city vibe about it, where Sydney's lost yeah. it decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same. Stockholm. And I think yeah. that goes for a lot of, you know, capital cities contra, you know, the, the second biggest city or something like that. This is, you know, people are from Gothenburg here, whereas in Stockholm, everybody's from somewhere else. Yeah. Precisely. That's that's exactly how it yeah. is in Sydney. Don't worry. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm going to cast your mind or keep keep this track going if that's okay. Now, look, yeah. I've read a, a, some interviews with you, but I, I haven't heard you being asked this que question recently. Okay. So I'm going to cast you to cast your mind back. Uh, you know, what is it, 30 years ago now, but how come you left in flames after the lunar strain? I, I didn't leave because I never really joined. Uh, so um, it was it's 90, right after we recorded Skydancer, first Dark Tranquility album. Um, Anders, who sings this within flames now, he he left Dark Tranquility. So I started singing and I stopped playing guitar and we got Freddie Gewonson to play guitar. And during this time, I started talking to Jesper and he was in another band called Ceremonial Oath and he wasn't really happy. He wanted to do something else. So he, he asked, he said, like, I'm going to start another band with some friends. And if you like to sing on the demo, it would be great. I just want to have a demo so that we can 
uh, send it out and maybe get a deal, you know? So, so we did and recorded like a three song demo. Um, and it was fun. And for me, it was just, uh, more practice and more experience, you know, like we were rehearsing like crazy with Dr. Quillity writing in the gallery at the time. And, and yes, we were like, Hey, come over and then we we'll rehearse and spend time in the Russell studio and then actually record a demo in, in, um, studio Fredman. And that was the first time I was there. Um, and then that demo immediately got picked up. So <laughs> this, this label from, from down South Malmö, um, they wanted to do an album. And Jesper asked me to to be part of that. And I said, like, I don't know, like, I don't want my first album as a singer to be anything other than Dark Tranquility, because that, that feels weird. Mm. But he um, he bought me some beers and I was convinced. And then, uh, and then I said, OK, fuck it, let's do it. And then we so then we recorded Luna Strain and that was it really like um, and then we immediately after that, we started recording the gallery. And so um, and we did. Or was it two shows, one in Berlin and one in Stockholm? And that was it, like with, with that lineup. And then um, then Jesper moved on and he got two other singers to sing on those uh, EPs that he mm. did later on. And then, then Anders joined like two years or three years later. Um, so yeah, so I was never really uh, part of that. So I never left. <laughs> really that clears that up yeah yeah but it's a, it's a common misconception like it's always like oh did you did you and anders kind of meet on a bridge you know within the headlights and then you kind of <laughs> the band switch singers you know like you know like in a movie but no that that didn't happen yeah that's true yeah yeah so yeah what about with hammerfall what happened there uh, <laughs> uh well funny you should mention it because that the rock contest that i i spoke of it uh, that was uh, part uh, of the reason why Hammerfall formed. So Oscar wanted to form a heavy metal band so that he, we can play at this this contest because it's it's fun. It was a cool thing. Uh, you, yeah, as I said, like you, you get to be in a uh, in front of a big crowd and play like a professional PA and all that stuff. And so we 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 started and we entered that contest and we did you know three songs. You you do two songs and one cover. That was the kind of like the rules of the the contest. And then that was it. And it was fun. And then the year after we did the same thing, but then they liked us enough so that we got to the semifinals of this contest. And this was 96. And when the, the time of the semifinals came, I was on tour, like our second tour with Dark Tranquility. And so they needed another singer. And uh, Oscar said like, oh, I'm going to talk to you, Joachim. Like he, he can probably do it. He just came back from, from America to like, you know, music high school that I, he went to. And, and I, for me, it was just a fun thing. I'm not a, you know, traditional heavy metal guy at all. That's not really my thing. So we just had, had a blast doing it together. I love Oscar and I love the band, you know, and I, and I'm so happy and proud of what they have accomplished. But for me, they was kind of like, yeah, cool. Go ahead without me. I'm fine. You know, and, and Joachim is such a great singer and I could never do the stuff that he does. So it was, um, it was just a brief little fun thing to do. It's interesting, though, talking to you. I'm just reminded that a lot of the bands did swap members there for a period of time. There was it was uh, absolutely yep. a scene, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a scene. It was a scene yeah, I mean, where yeah. people you were rehearsing in adjacent rehearsal studios to each other and sharing beers and stuff. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's a tiny. I mean, it's not a big city, and especially in the early '90s, nobody kind of knew about you know extreme metal. So it was only us. Like there was this bus line, you know, that took us from where, where I grew up into town, you know, um, and it's like a 40 minute, uh, bus ride. And along this bus ride, like I got on first and then Thomas Lindbergh from at the gates came on, mm -hmm. then Nicholas and Anders Friedian came on the next stop. And then we had the Bueller twins came on the next and then Anders Evers from Tiamat and Sir Monoloth and Dr. Quillity and, 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 and Peter Evers as well. Like those were all on the same bus line and that's how we, how we met and how we started to hang out. And then there was this one small, uh, venue in, in town where we all went to see kind of extreme music, whether it was punk or synth or hardcore, but mostly metal. And, and that was the dream to kind of play there eventually. And, and, and we did in 91 or something like that, or 90 the first time. And, and so that's where the kind of the scene grew. And there was one record store called Dolores records where they had 
metal where you can actually get, you know, fucking carcass or morbid angel and stuff like that. And that's, yeah, that's where everybody went. So that's how the steam got started. And of course that meant also like everybody started bands, but not everybody was compatible with everybody. So yeah, there's, yeah. there was a lot of swapping in between members. Uh, maybe not so much for, for dark tranquility until uh, later, but, um, but yeah, that definitely happened. I mean, there's, there was not enough musicians. <laughs> Did you feel an overwhelming sense of camaraderie or was it a bit like a platoon where you could still have some bitching involved? No, it was uh, all, all good friends first and foremost. I mean, that's how, how it started. Like, um, yeah, just hanging out, like hanging out at each other's houses, listening to, to music, uh, swapping records and, uh, and fan scenes and, you know, trading tapes and, and that kind of stuff. So that's how it started first. And then we started playing music. And then of course it was, all about kind of sharing experiences and, and helping each other out and yeah, and sharing rehearsal rooms and, um, and equipment, that kind of stuff. So there was never any like, um, yeah, there was no competition between bands at all. Like, and it still isn't, uh, regardless of genre or, you know, but now there are millions of bands, of course, from, from the city, but, um, it's always been like a really cool atmosphere. And we still hang out with all the musicians here in town, uh, on weekends and, shows and stuff so it's it's still a really cool cool vibe like that. and i love it yeah great i'm just just talking to you i'm just musing on this it might be a swedish characteristic there being very egalitarian okay rather than the tall poppy syndrome will bring each other down to a similar level there's that element of encouragement and it, it just happened at the right time just as the match was struck and you know there's a lot of oxygen in the room and it allowed the genre sweet death and the Gothenburg scene to just explode. And was it a surprise? Yeah. Was was it a surprise to you guys though, that you were getting letters from people in Australia and that sort of thing? Yeah, really. I mean, of course we, we were the ones writing letters first, you know, as a, as fans, you know, I, I was tape trading and writing letters to all kinds of bands and ordering demos and, and stuff, um, in the late eighties. And, um, uh, so then when, when we, and, and or we, we dreamed of love having something out, you know, like having a demo or, a, and, and I think our first seven inch was the one that kind of like got, got some attention out there. And it, it was fantastic to get it like orders for our seven inch from, from South America or from Australia for, you know, like from, from America and like from, you know, south of France or something like that. It was insane, you know, and it was so cool. And it was, of course, yeah, we couldn't have dreamed of it you know and but it was still a feeling like okay we we there are others like us out there you know that kind of thing and that 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 was really really cool but it was only uh, around like 95 96 i think when when we realized that people are were really kind of into this uh sound that we had and you know just a race came out and story of the soul came out in the same year in 95 mm -hmm. Uh, together with the gallery. So, so that became when it Great was year. first coined, you know, like when people started talking about it. And uh, I still remember we were on tour in, in Germany, our second ever tour, I think it was. And I was sitting in the bathroom and on the floor was like this uh, flyer for some new German band. And it said like playing traditional or class or true Gothenburg death metal. It's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, I had no idea. Like, <laughs> I never heard heard it before. No one had mentioned it. And I was like, what? There's bands like claiming to play like Gothenburg death metal band from Germany. Uh, yeah. So that, that, and then I realized that this is, okay, this is something, you know, it was cool. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it started over here with Entombed. I think it's probably fair. And then mm. sort of it came along yeah. behind them. And, and it was just, yeah. I, I distinctly remember Wolverine Blues back in the day and thinking Fuck it was yes. an Amer thinking it was a British band. That's right. And then it was Swedish okay. and thinking there's yeah, something yeah. going on over there because that sounded like nothing else at the time, did it? Yeah. Very no, 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 no. I mean, I was blown away. And yeah, I remember, yeah, Nihilist, of course. And then when the first Entombed demo came, like, fuck it was it was insane like um i was fortunate that like thomas limberg is two years older than i so we had some friends from stockholm so that came down so i got to meet all these guys like the tiamat guys and stuff like that when i was just 15 or something like that and they, it was really influential just like hanging out with people who are just you know a little bit older but had had some experience and actually had recorded demos you know and done stuff and and of course like thomas had grotesque before at the gates was formed and uh, i was a huge fan of that and i always went to the rehearsal room and hung out so that that became kind of like a 
a thing for me like hey this is possible this can be actually be done you know and uh, that that had a, a huge effect on me and 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 then then no is seeing how yeah and tune kind of took the roof off of every venue they played and like it became a phenomenon phenomenon in itself and it, it was it was amazing to see hmm. yeah gotcha have i got time for a couple more questions or have you got a head oh uh, let's you got see another one on there? i uh, no actually it's fine Cool. I'll just ask a couple more then. Yeah. Sure. Again, I get someone like you, mate, and I just go, because these are the questions that I've had in the back of my mind for decades. Right? <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm, I'm glad I, to answer, man. Yeah. Look, I, I never felt that there was a like a rivalry or any competition between you guys and Emperor and the, you know, the the black metal elite, if you want to call them that. But did you ever feel that no. one? No. no. I mean, Sure, there were people who called us life metal and uh, were not into, you know, if you're going to play death metal, it should be evil and should be this and that. But we tried to kind of go against all that. And uh, as much as I I love some of the music, that that kind of the philosophy and, and that kind of extremism mm. never no, appealed to me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was... Uh, and it was like only when I kind of got to meet some of these these guys that... We're talking so tough on in, in in the fan scenes that I read and I got to meet him. It's like, oh yeah, we're all fucking metalheads. And it was cool. So but yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe there was a, a short time where we were not very popular with with some of the black metal bands, but I, that never really bothered me and and nothing really came of it. So but it, but it was a thing, I mean, sure, you know, like in the nineties where where we kind of blew up and you know churches caught fire and, and that kind of stuff yeah. in Norway and it was it was insane and and of course like the kind of more mainstream media um kind of bundled all the extreme metal together and 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 thought that we were part of that too and um that was it was kind of strange but obviously I mean it, it was new to everybody um but um yeah I, I, I'm glad I'm glad we never kind of it was never a thing you know that that we got caught up in i think we we managed to um to kind of exist very far away from all that yeah yeah even back then i felt you know far flung australia with the uh, listing and i remember there was a metal store down in sydney called the hammer house warhead records and stuff was there and yep. the lady down there was telling me about what was going on over there and it just sounded like these guys were lonely and being like they were bullied or something and so they resorted to these yeah. really really in hindsight despicable acts let's face it and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, the way that elements of the media even glorified it and i've watched the yep. uh lords of chaos film which i think a lot of people yep. don't like it but i think that's a that's a very good summary in my understanding of what happens without going yeah. into the intimate details okay yeah yeah, yeah. you know and and summer and they're just to me they're just like a little elite club who yep. these young men who just weren't bothered trying to fit in with the rest of society and yep. the music was sort of almost became secondary to that and i think yeah. that's obvious because they got involved in all yep. these anti-social activities yeah I was, um, I was, I mean, it was an interesting time, but it, it went too far for sure. Like, uh, and yeah, some, some of my friends got so caught up in it and, um, mm. and that was sad to see, you know, um, because of course there's an attraction to in that, you know, uh, for a lot of people, but, uh, it was never that interesting to me, like no, for you... the musical side of things, you know? Yeah, well, you, you still can't get an interview with Sam off these days. I've tried, believe no. me. Um, I know, no. I know people close to him, and he won't do it. And no. I, my take on it is that he's just sick of being asked about all that bullshit back then. I, I think so. And, uh, yeah. That's sad because that he's got be such too, a great contribution yeah. to it. But he, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's off the radar these days, except for when you watch him live. Great guitarist, great, great musician. It'd, it'd be lovely to have this type of a conversation with him, but... It yeah. just can't happen. Maybe, maybe in the yeah. future, but who knows? You know. Yeah, let's hope so. But yeah, I, but I, I, I get that. You know, like if you know that, like the same old question is going to come up every single time you you talk to someone, then uh, let it go. You know, it's easy yeah. to 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 not do it. But yeah, I don't, I don't blame him. I just think he's got such a great, great story to tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with with uh, with Duck uh, Tranquility as well, you've had quite a lot of changes lately, haven't you? Just in the last couple of years, were they were they COVID yeah. inspired or? I wouldn't say inspired, but uh, parts of it happened during um, COVID and um, 
yeah, like Andy Sievers, who who been with us for for many years, and was one of my oldest friends. Like uh, during COVID, he realized that yeah, maybe I don't want to tour that much, and he he realized that the jo- the day job that he has, he's a teacher in, in, a, in an amazing school outside of town, and he he realized that this is really what I do. I don't want to leave these kids, you know. I don't I don't want to be away. And when we started planning all this touring that we we were doing last year, he realized that I I, I can't. And and I totally respect that. I, I miss him like crazy and I see him all the time, but it's um it, it was sad and but I get it, you know, like, yeah, you should do what you you truly love. And uh, and for him it was like being with his family and also like yeah, the all the students. And um and then kind of Anders the other Anders uh, drummer left and that that was kind of tumultuous in a way, but it during so during COVID, like we were like, okay, like maybe I think it kind of um, solidified exactly what you want to do. Like you, it, it's easy to find something else when everything kind of uh, went on a standstill. And um, for me, it became even clearer that this is what I really, really want to do. So I, and I started two other bands, you know, um, just that I could keep myself busy. Whereas a lot of other people, you know, another, a lot of musicians kind of really like, ah, maybe I'll, I'll find another source of income and something else to do. Uh, so that was part of it. And, um, but it was, it was great kind of finding new, new people. So Christian, who pl- also plays in Gran Cadaver, like he's an old, old friend of mine. Um, some of our first shows that we ever had in Gothenburg, we did with this other band, Sarka- um, <laughs> Pagandom. And he was like, they were like our heroes when we were kids. Like when we grow up playing guitar, we went to Pagandom to see them and Christian was the vocalist and bass player. And they were like the best band in Gothenburg for, for many years. And um, so having him in the band is just fucking fantastic. And um, and then Joachim is a, is a friend of Johan's from Malmö and they went to a music high school in, in Malmö together and studied and you want immediately recognize like this guy knows his stuff like he can do play anything he can do anything and um and that was fantastic so Joachim fucking rules and he came to our, our first rehearsal we had 17 songs and stuff like that for an upcoming festival mm. and we just said like oh, okay does anything particularly like you need to ask or it's like how do you feel it's like no i know the songs let's go and he played everything perfectly so yeah and he hasn't missed a beat since and it's crazy and then, yeah, re- just recently, yeah, Chris Amot left, but he's he's been ask, kind yeah. of, yeah, and it, and he's been kind of he wants to do something else, and and I think like he 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 wants to kind of do his own thing, whereas Doctor Quillity is very much um, a band where we you all work together, but it's especially Martin Brenstrom and 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 now Johan and and I, mm. so so it's kind of hard for anyone to kind of come into that group where we have been writing like this for for such a long time. And I think he, you know, and he just wants to do his his own thing, like the way that he wants to. And um, so it just came to a point where he said, like, yeah, I, I need to focus on other things. And and uh, so it is really sad because he's such an amazing guitar player and an awesome guy. And but I want him to be happy. You know, I want him to write the best possible music. It's just not Dark Tranquility stuff, you know something else so and that's what he's doing right now so i'm 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 dying to hear what he is uh, working on but so, so for now we're, we're looking for um, a replacement guitar for for chris mm-hmm. Amott. but in the meantime we have chris old guitar student um Yoi conception and he's incredible <laughs> like he's he's just insane like this it's one of the best guitar players i've, I've seen um so it's for now it's we're good it's it's fun to play together where everybody's like on top of their game and it, it's, it's even me and Martin who the old guys we have to really fucking improve and become as good as these mm. new, new guys and and it puts the show on a different level I think for for us and um, I couldn't be happier and we can play some songs that we haven't played ever before because they were too difficult or something like that and now we can play absolutely everything and that's fun to, to go back to cool. you know the 90s and pick up some songs that, that just haven't been played live Unreal. So it's yeah. awesome. It's it's good times. I'm I'm really happy. But yeah, it's been um, tumultuous and and a bit difficult. But yeah, definitely a challenge. Mm. Hey, mate, this is my final question for you. And uh, look, you, you're a sharp guy. How you tour a lot? 
you're in three bands, as we've mentioned, and you, you've, but I, I don't remember you there ever being any commentary in social media or blabbermouth or even in magazines beforehand about you getting into a spot of bother or what have you. How have you avoided the pitfalls of alcohol through that period? Well, I, 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 I drink a lot. I love uh, drinking. I really but do. You know what I mean, though. Uh, like, it, yeah, it but, but I, I can I, tell I, it hasn't affected you. No, but I, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't really have that addictive um, uh, thing. You know that 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 makes me don't want to stop. Uh, or I, I can always stop drinking, uh, and and it's fine. You know. Um, so when we, we go out on tour, it's a party every night, always. Um, but when I get home, it's you know family time, and you're just you yeah. know. So I, I'm always fine with that. But of course, I mean, of course, it, it takes a toll, and it's not healthy at all. But uh, I'll I'll try, you know, I try to um, stay as healthy as I can without stopping the drinking. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the only thing I notice that'll put the brakes on a lot of bands is that we're all getting older, right? I mean, I was, I was, you're not much older yeah. than me. I'm 45, right? But I just noticed there was a member in 2015. It was, I think, the eve of that when David Bowie and Lemmy died within about a week or two weeks of each other, yeah. and it sort of brought in a sharp focus that if you really continue to abuse your body, sort of in your mid 40s and thereafter, I don't know whether David yeah. will. I know Lemmy drank every day, but uh, I don't know whether David yeah. did that. But he certainly did his fair share. Let's face it. But it seems yeah. it just seems like you know at a certain point moderation is the norm as opposed to indulgence yeah. and that'll allow yeah. you to keep on doing it because we're just getting to this moment uh, the guys in cannibal corpse are approaching you know they're they're uh, past 50 now i think um yeah. tr trey from morbid angel i think is pushing 60 if i'm not mistaken yeah um and we want to see the bands continue going on but it just might be a physical yeah. thing where it's just not gonna not gonna happen and you, you just strike me as a very sharp guy who seems to have been able to find the balance in it amongst it all yeah, I don't, I don't know if, but, but, yeah, usually, I mean, it, you know, it always kind of, maybe you go too far sometimes during a tour, but, um, but it's all like you always have a show every day, so you know you you gotta have to keep sharp for that. Um, so it, it's it's okay. Um, I like to think that I've somewhat balanced. <laughs> Doesn't go don't don't go too far, but. But it's yeah. you, 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 you think week? about it like when you start a tour, it's like seven weeks. Holy fuck, that is this going to be rough? But oh yeah, I don't know. I was talking to the Paradise Lost guys about that, and I said, "You guys yeah. uh, don't strike me as guys who drink a lot." And I went, "Hang on, hang on, hold up a bit there. We're like carrying the flag for drinking bands, and it just I guess some I guess it comes down to this: some people can, some people can't. Simple. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that. I mean, and um, yeah, and it's important. Like when you come into to Dr. Quilly, to like you have to be. Um, could be a drinker that helps <laughs> well i couldn't imagine being too sloshed having to play those bloody technical guitar lines and those no, 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 rhythms no. and stuff you guys have got i mean no, no, no. It, can... it begins after after the show indeed yeah great yeah well, it's been a pleasure finally catching up with you mate um Thank good luck too, mate. good luck in australia mate you know there's going to be a ton yeah. of people out there watching you guys headline awesome. the lager fest and i'll certainly be there yeah that's going to be super fun i can't wait I'm just going well, to travel all the way to the other side <laughs> of the world and go to South America and Mexico and America and well, before, but yeah. Oh, well, you know, save some beer drinking for here then, mate. <laughs> good, 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 good. Look forward to it. Absolutely, mate. No worries. Well, thanks very all much right. for the chat. Really Cheers. appreciate it. Cheers. Take it easy, man. Thanks, brother. Catch you. Well, there you have it. A conversation with Michael Stanny from the outfits Dark Tranquility, The Halo Effect, and also Grand Cadaver. Very, very interesting stuff indeed. I love talking to these guys that have been there since the very beginning. So much wisdom and knowledge to share. Okay, if you like that chat, thank you to all you Rumble people for tuning in. I do really appreciate that because the future of the show, I think, is off-platform. I'm going to be migrating the show over time away from YouTube and onto the less visited sites, but I have very good reasons for doing that. You've heard me talk in other uh, episodes about the issues that certainly the show, I don't really have it too much here, censorship and cancel culture, but it looms, there's no doubt. And I wanna be able to have different conversations without the threat of an episode being pulled, such as the one with John Joseph, ex Chromags, talked about the origins of coronavirus and all the bullshit with Anthony Fauci and the gain of function research and the big cover up 
there by mainstream media and big tech. It's ridiculous. Facts are facts. Mm. But apparently, if you talk facts on YouTube, well, you get removed. Thank God for Spotify on that front. But nothing like video is there. And I know Spotify has video, but it's it's not a community thing, is it? Like YouTube is, or hopefully Rumble will become. Okay, so there are many more chats over at scarsandguitars.com if you're interested. And whilst you're there, check out my book, click the link in the banner and you'll be taken to a marketplace of your choice. Do the rest, download a sample, etc. More information to share with you about the book in the moment, but before we get to that, I'll bid you a fond farewell. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast. Until next time, it's a goodbye for now. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal, and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Coal Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a, a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Super Joint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms it, yes. Playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction. To George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was. He was very, you know, very open-minded, and and he was into having his his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five, and Manson gave me that name, and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book.